Welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today we're going to set up a persistent VPN site-to-site -site tunnel uh, between two PFSense routers. Uh, earlier in the series we built out a virtualized PFSense firewall in our lab environment. Uh, this was a good representation of what a real-world internet-facing firewall would look like uh, and we can continue to build upon that. So let's take a look at where we're at. We've got our first PFSense firewall here and it's got a few computers behind it, access to the internet. Fairly typical, right? Today we're going to go ahead and introduce a second PFSense firewall to our environment with a couple computers behind it and also access to the internet. But, but how can we have them talk to each other securely? That's where our IPsec tunnel comes in. With this in place, the two sites can talk to each other, we can route traffic, we can block, deny with firewall rules, and the two sites can communicate as if they had a private network connection between them. Pretty awesome, right? So what do we need? Uh, first, we need to build out a second PFSense virtual machine, obviously. This is going to represent our second site, and I definitely recommend you check out the video. I've got a, I've got a link above there, and also I'll throw it down in the description. Go ahead and check out my build video for PFSense, and all you're going to do is modify a few of the settings so that uh, it's, it can sit alongside your existing firewall and not conflict. That's going to be the VLAN tags, so if you gave it 600 series VLAN tags, if you were following along in my series, um, just give it 700, that'd be fine. As long as they don't overlap, you're good. And then same with the IP subnets that you use. So for example, we used 10.1.100.0 slash 24. Use 10.2.100 for your, for your subnets over there, just as an example. So just make sure those don't overlap, make sure the host name of the actual firewall doesn't overlap. And beyond that, you can, you can get that up and going. And then you're also gonna to wanna to attach a virtual machine to it so that we have something to send traffic to and from when we start testing. And just to touch on this really quick, um, in case you get lost in here and you're building out your virtual switches, depending on how complex your VMware environment is underneath this, um, I just wanted to close the loop on that. So you just go to add networking, you're gonna add a virtual machine port group to a standard switch. You're gonna select that switch where your VM traffic runs. You're going to give it a name. If you have multiple machines, it's important that the name is exactly the same. So this one will be OMG LAN Site 2 for me. And I'm giving it the 700 VLAN tag. Remember, it was 600 on the other side. So 700 over here, just to separate them. And then you'll just step through that for the remaining uh, DMZ and servers VLANs as well. And what you'll end up with if you're following along in our series is you'll have something similar to this where you'll see your VLAN ID from our original PFSense build is in the 600 series tags and then your new ones are in the 700 series tags. Um, again, the numbers are arbitrary. It's just important that they don't overlap and that they make sense to you. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and grab one of our test machines. Uh, I have this from previous config. I'm gonna swing this one over to run on one of those networks that are in the other site now. So let me switch this over. I'm gonna put this in the OMG Servers Site 2 network and power it up. So once you have your second site configured correctly, I should be able to ping its own gateway and it can, that's great. Uh, I should be able to ping out to the internet and I can. I should not be able to ping the LAN at Site 2, 192.168. 20.1. Nope, I cannot ping it. Good. Should also not be able to reach the uh, site number one. That means our networks are properly isolated. Uh, that would be, for example, 10.1.10.1 network. Nope, no route to that. So at this point, we have two completely separated installations. Uh, they have proper VLANs. They're isolated as if they were in two physically separate locations. So. Uh, we're in a good spot to go ahead and start setting up an IPsec tunnel between them. This would be the exact same steps we would take for, for firewalls that are actually attached to the internet. Okay guys, so with that, uh, we are all set. This is our original PFSense, kind of our site one firewall. And then this one here, almost identical. This is our second site, the one we just built, we've tested, we made sure that we can communicate as described and that we can't quite yet talk to each other. So once you have your second site PFSense firewall up and running, you're going to be left at kind of a greenfield 
configuration like this. Uh, I went ahead and got the VMware tools installed. Uh, I have it on a static IP for its WAN interface. Uh, I went ahead and wired in the rule to allow access to the web interface via the WAN, all the things you need to do. Okay, now we're ready to actually build the IPsec tunnels. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. And we are gonna be using IPv2. So we are using modern security and uh, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the overview is I want my site to LAN network to be able to reach the original site one DMZ without traversing the internet. I want it to go through our IPsec tunnel. So that's kind of our end goal. And let's step through how we're actually gonna do that. So on our original one here, we're gonna to wanna to build out the VPN. Go to VPN, IPsec, go ahead and add a P1, or phase one. We want IC2, we want IP4, interface WAN is correct. Remote gateway. So this is going to be the IP address of the public IP on our other PFSense server. Now we're in a lab, so this is actually an internal network, uh, but the firewalls don't know that. So that remote site I know is 192, 168, 2.6. Uh, identifier for myself and the remote are both going to be IP address and a pre-shared key. Hit the generate new pre-shared key. It puts out a nice long random string. We're going to go ahead and copy that. Okay, so let's look at the encryption algorithms. We want our key length to be 256 bit, one a little stronger. SHA-256 is good. And we want this Diffie-Hellman group to be 15. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down and hit save and apply. Okay, with our phase one built, let's go ahead and do a phase two entry. Think of that phase one as more like a link state. It doesn't actually define any IP addresses to route or anything like that. So that's gonna happen in the phase two. So this kind of rides on top of that phase one. So this is where we're gonna define the subnets we wanna route. So again, we're still on our site one. We're gonna add a P2, phase two. We want to route our DMZ network. So I'm gonna choose the OMG DMZ. Remember, we want the remote site two LAN to be able to reach the site one original DMZ through the IPsec tunnel. And the remote network is going to be the LAN over on site two. So that's 192, 20.0 slash 24. Remember, we're, we're doing this in sitter naming format. So you define the network with that dot zero and then slash for the length of it, slash 24. Protocol ESP encryption algorithm AS256 and uncheck this other option. If there's anything else here, uncheck it. And in the hash algorithms, we want that at SHA-256, so that's fine. And then the PFS, which is the perfect forward security, we want to set that to 15 and automatically ping. This is just how the, the tunnel itself kind of does a little bit of a keep alive and this is how it knows that it's up and running. So we'll give this the IP of the remote subnet that we're connecting to. 192.168.20.1. That's the interface over on the other side. Save and apply. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. So let's pop over to our remote site and step to the same process. Add the phase one, like V2. Remote gateway is gonna be the IP of the other side. Pre-shared key, we're gonna paste this in from the other side. This will be the same key that we generated earlier. And same for the encryption, we want to use the same settings as the other side. So 256-bit AES, SHA-256 is good. And if you Hellman group 15, scroll down, hit save, apply. And we also wanna add that phase two. So we need to think about what traffic we're sending down this tunnel. So this needs to be complementary to the other side of this so that it'll come up. So this is over on the second site and we wanna go its LAN network and we're trying to connect over to the remote sites DMZ. So we wanna put in the network space of that DMZ network on the remote side. 10.1.20.0 slash 24. Just as before, we wanna do AES 256. Uncheck our other options here. SHA 256 is good. PFS 15. And additionally, we want to also be able to do that keep alive packet back the other direction. So 10.1.20.1 and hit save and apply. Okay, with the phase one and phase two built out on both sides, we can go over to status, IPsec, and take a look at those. 
And if we hit our show child SA entries, this is the actual network routing layers. Okay, so our channel is built, but we have one more step. If we were to go to our virtual machine that is on the second site LAN and try to ping over to the DMZ on the first site, probably not gonna work. Let's see what happens if we try to ping over to the DMZ on site one from site two LAN. Hmm, nothing, okay. And that's expected. So we have our tunnel built and we're, we have our routes in place, but we don't have any firewall rules allowing that traffic to actually get from its source to its destination. So let's pop back on over. Let's go to the first firewall and go to firewall, go to rules, go to the IPsec tab. We're gonna add in a bit too permissive of a rule just so that we can see the traffic flowing. Now, if you trust the traffic on the two subnets that we're talking about, this is fine, but typically you're probably gonna to wanna to scope this down a little bit better. So for now, we're just gonna do what we call an any any rule. Networking guys hate that. Somewhere out there, there's a uh, networking guy screaming at his computer. No any any rules. Come on, it's just a lab, give me a break. So this rule here, this is going to allow, just in the IPsec interface, okay, this is not everywhere, just in the IPsec tunnel, it's going to allow from any source, any port, to any destination, any port, okay? So we're gonna do that on both sides. So that's the primary side. Second side, same thing, create the exact same rule. We're gonna go IPsec, interface, protocol, any, source, destination, any, any, save, and apply. Okay, so, we have our IPsec tunnel in place, it's up and running. We're routing the proper subnets, and now we have firewall rules to allow that traffic to traverse. So, if we go back and test again, oh, look at that. So now we're actually able to pass traffic from the remote site two over to the original site, DMZ, over the IPsec tunnel. If these two firewalls were actually on the internet, it would work exactly the same. So they're gonna function as if they are on a WAN, essentially. You can route traffic down there. And what's great too is with the IPsec tunnel, you don't have to worry about any routing or anything like that. PFSense builds those routes in place. So you don't have to do that additional layer, but you do have to do the rules to allow or deny traffic. So with that, let's do one more thing. I wanna show that it truly is going down the IPsec tunnel. So let's go back to our site one, go to the VPN, IPsec, Let's disable that tunnel and apply, okay? So we just took the tunnel down. So if we go back to our machine and try to ping again, we're down, we're not getting any response. So that shows us that we are in fact running that traffic down that IPsec tunnel successfully. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that back up, hit enable, hit apply, and head back on over. And there we see that ping running in the background. As soon as that tunnel came back up, traffic started flowing again. So that wraps us up. Uh, you have successfully created a multi-site IPsec tunnel. You're routing traffic through it. You're able to understand the rules and be able to steer that traffic appropriately. Also keep in mind, you can also add uh, additional sites. This is not a dedicated one-to-one. -one. You can add as many sites as you want theoretically and create yourself a nice large hub and spoke IPsec based WAN, all with free open source PFSense firewalls. Pretty awesome stuff. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, this has been a really fun exercise. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps me a lot. And go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll get notified next time I post another video like this. And let me know in the comments what you think, if there's additional topics you'd like to see covered. If you have questions or comments about what we've done here today, I'd love to hear back. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.